shit. Oh. Welcome back to Fish Cooks and Eats. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and the subscribe. And if you already subscribed, thank you for joining in. Now, today was the last day before the end of the 22 season, and we headed out to south of Rhode Island to do some talk fishing. Now, for those of you that never talk fished before, now, th normally they are found around lots of structures, bridges, rock piling, and I was trolling along to one of my spots and I noticed a rock pile with some arches on there. So I gave it a test. Now with the togs, they're known as bait stealers. Because as you feel the nibble, they start to nibble on the legs, the head, and they'll just take the bait right off. So you gotta have a nice sensitive rod. So what I'm using here, I got a 20 pound braided line with a 3000 Daiwa back bay. The rod I'm using is a Jigging Whirl Nexus. It's a medium heavy rod and it's very sensitive at the tip and it also has a very strong backbone. I was told that these rods here, you can bring it to the moon. My brother-in-law was trying to get me to pull a 45 pound weight with it. I was like, nah, not yet. Let me use it first. Now for the tackle I'm using is a 3 4 ounce jig head for togs. I know back then when I first started fishing for tog, you know, I went as simple as it can be with a sinker, dropper loop, and a hook. Put some crab on and you're fishing. But the only problem with that is that with the sinker on the bottom, I noticed that it always hit the snags. Somehow, once the fish hit it, they pull it right into the rocks because these fish are known for stealing bait and taking you under right away. I know most of the tog fishermen will tell you that do not set the hook until you start to feel your jig move. But if you're using a 3 ounce jig, it's very hard to tell. That's why with the way I like to fish is I would use the lightest possible to hold bottom. And some people will always tell you to anchor and start the bite, but I just like to drift better. I don't know, maybe because I get bored too easy, just stay in one spot. So I like to move around and, and keep busy. Now, as you notice with the video, a lot of shorts are being caught before any of the big ones. That's the reason why, because the smaller ones will always hit your line first. Don't ask me why. I don't know how why they do that, but when the big one hits, you're gonna notice a different type of tap. It's not the same one like a small one. A small one nibble, a big one usually taps the line and try to take off with it and their lips are like a leather. So you gotta make sure you have a sharp jig so that way once you set the hook, it drives into the lip. Now with the tog fishing, one important thing you gotta remember is that these fish are very powerful. So you gotta make sure your drag is really tight because once they hit and you set that hook, they're gonna try to swim into a rock. So you gotta make sure you get them out there as soon as you can because that's why with a rod with a backbone, we'll pull them right out. A good sonar, I wouldn't say it's needed, but it helps. I hope you like the fishing so far, but if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Now with the way I like to fish with underwater structure is that I like to take a look at the structure and which way the current is running because 80% of the time the fish will never be in front of the structure with the current coming towards it. So I like to be around the side or the back. Now when I drop my jig, depending on the size of the jig, I would probably go 20 feet ahead of it, toss it up, and let the current pull the jig back. So it, to me, I think it just looks more natural when a fish sees something moving in the current in their direction, so they're thinking a free meal. Well, I want to say thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe and that like if you haven't yet. 